Hi there, Allison here with another Cab Franc du Jour. Today we are in Bourgogne and we're looking at the Domaine de la Chevalerie 2015 Galiche Bourgogne. The Calo family of Domaine de la Chevalerie can trace their roots in Bourgogne back to 1640. Today, 14th generation Emmanuel and his sister Laurie have taken up reins of the estate. They're farming around 33 hectares of vines, predominantly in the commune of Restigné, with a few parcels in the commune of Benet, specifically their holdings in Grand Mont. They're making several expressions of Cabernet Franc, including the range that they refer to as the Cuvée d'Inspiration. And these are all wines that are coming from a mix of parcels, each with their own unique stylistic vision behind them. And then they have an ambitious range of six cuvées parcellaires, and each of these is coming from their own specific single lieu d. And these wines are all seeking to showcase the terroir from which they come. One of the core tenets of the family's approach is extremely uh, thoughtful and meticulous work in the vineyard. They've been farming certified organic since 2008 and certified biodynamic since 2012. And they're one of the few estates that I've encountered in the central Loire that have taken things a step further by introducing regenerative farming practices, including permanent cover crops and no-till farming. And when I visited the Domaine for the first time last spring, their vineyards really did have this wonderful sense of life and vitality to them. And when you're standing in the vineyards, there is an undeniable energy and pulse to the natural environment. Now the parcels for this wine, as well as actually the majority of the family's parcels, as I mentioned, are from the commune of Restigné. And Restigné is actually one of the most diverse communes in the Bourgogne appellation in terms of terroirs. So it's worth taking some time to dissect uh, this commune a little bit. So the commune of Restigné is on the east side of the Changeon River and we're bordered to the north and northwest by the commune of Benet and bordered to the east by the commune of Engrand de Touraine. And Restigné, along with the commune of Boroy, which is on the opposite side of the Changeon River, these are the only two communes in the Appalachian that have a high concentration of vineyards on both the ancient alluvial terrace as well as the slopes. So the ancient alluvial terrace in Chastigny begins about three kilometers north of the Loire River and it stretches about four kilometers from east to west and it's about a kilometer and a quarter from north to south. Here the vineyards are at elevations of around 35 to 45 meters above sea level. The vineyards are predominantly flat with rather deep soils and the soil texture is mostly sand or silty sand. And then we have varying uh, amounts of, and percentages of gravels in there as well, depending on where you are. And then in the northeast part of the commune, we have the slopes and the slopes stretch about one and a half kilometers to the northeast. Here we're at elevations that range from around 55 to upwards to 70 meters above sea level. On the slopes, we find uh, vineyards with increasingly more shallow topsoil as well as more clay in the topsoil as well. Uh, and here the main bedrock influence is mostly the middle Tronian white tufo chalk, with the exception of a very narrow band of vineyards towards the top of the slope that is on the upper Tronian to, uh, yellow tufo chalk. And then uh, as the slope, uh, as we get to the top of the slope, we hit this plateau area where we find vineyards at the highest elevation in the commune. And this is around 75 to 80 meters above sea level. And this is where uh, we find Sinonian era clays and sands that are mixed with a bit of flint. So where the Lieu de les Galichiers is located, we are mid slope here. Uh, and uh, this is really where the slope begins to take over from the ancient alluvial terrace. And the uh, family has around five hectares in this particular UD, uh, and their vines were planted in the 1950s. So in 2015, they would have been around 60 or so years of age. And their parcels, as well as their UD as a whole, has more of a southwestern exposure. Now, in terms of soils, the uh, family has done a lot of work to better understand the soils in their vineyards. And if you visit the estate, they actually have cross sections of their soils on display. Uh, so you can see the soil structure and the composition, and you really get a sense of how diverse their terroirs are and all coming from in, within this very small area. 
So in terms of their parcels in Galichy, uh, we have a, a clay sand topsoil, uh, and this has about 25% stoniness, and it's a mix of flint, sandstone, and chalk pebbles. Then we have a subsoil that is a clay silt sand mix with more gravels, and the topsoil and subsoil depth combined is around um, one meter to as much as two meters, depending on where you are. Uh, and then we hit the middle Tyrone Tufo chalk bedrock right after that. Now, if you have their cuvee chevalerie in your cellar, the terroirs for uh, these two wines are actually very similar. And the difference being is that chevalerie is a little bit further up the slope. Uh, and thus we have a little bit less uh, in terms of topsoil and subsoil. Thus that cuvee has a bit more of an impact of the tufo chalk. Now, in terms of their approach in the cellar, they take a very traditional approach to vinification and élevage. And actually, the winemaking for all of their cuvée parcellaire is more or less the same. So we're talking uh, hand harvested fruit, hand sorted fruit. Uh, it's all destemmed as well, and then the fermentation is in stainless steel with indigenous yeast. And the fermentation temperature hovers around 25 to 27 uh, degrees Celsius. And then in terms of their approach to maceration, it's really maceration through infusion here. So very little by way of active cap management techniques. The total maceration is on the longer side, about 24 days. And I should note as well, they are working via gravity uh, from sorting table to tank and then tank to press, avoiding the use of pumps uh, at all possible costs uh, during the various steps of vinification. And then uh, élevage takes place in older 400 to 500 liter oak barrels. And the élevage is a little bit on the shorter side, about seven months or so. And then the wine is then uh, bottled, unfined, unfiltered. Uh, and then they do a longer élevage in bottle. Uh, and so the, the shorter élevage in barrel helps to preserve the fruit and helps to round out the tannins. And then they have that long élevage in bottle, which really is seeking to harmonize the fruit, the acid, and the tannins. So this 2015, as well as their 2017, are both current releases uh, of this particular cuvee from the Domaine. So with all that said, let's get into the wine. Hmm. So what is a distinctive hallmark to the Chevalerie uh, approach and style is there is this wonderful, savory, autumnal, traditional uh, energy to the wines. And this wine is absolutely doing that. It has very, uh, it has a very beautiful perfume. It's very fragrant um, and it does have a certain headiness and a, a lift to the perfume. The fruits lean a bit more in the uh, tartar red fruit spectrum. I'm getting a bit of raspberry. There's a bit of, uh, of like cranberry here. There's a touch of wild strawberry as well. There's even a little bit of a black red currant thing going on too. But the wine does lean a little bit more on the savory side. And the pyrazines are coming through as a mix of like woody herbs, uh, like thyme. There's a bit of cedar wood here. There's a little bit of like a cured tobacco note. There's a bit of that uh, forest floor potting soil thing as well. And then there is this beautiful perfume uh, to the wine, like floral perfume. And it's coming through for me as peony, maybe even a bit of dried violets. And then there's a little bit of a spicy uh, profile as well to the nose, which is really nice, but really a pure fruited. There's a lot of clarity to the nose and it does lean in that more savory uh, spectrum. Those red fruits come through as they did on the nose um, and they have that nice crunchiness to, about them, which is really lovely. The spiciness uh, comes through as well. And the spiciness is coming through as a bit of like black and green peppercorns. There's a bit of baking spice here too. There's a touch of leather. We're getting into um, some mushroom uh, notes as well, which is really nice. The acidity is very sprightly, very energetic, very lively. Um, there's a crunchiness and a juiciness to the acidity as well. And then in terms of the tannins, the tannins have, we have a moderate amount of tannin here and the tannins are very finely woven. And I would say that the texture is reminiscent uh, to like linen. Uh, and there's a, a, a chewiness, a little bit slight chew of the tannins on the finish, which is really quite nice. Yeah. 
So the wine has a medium body and there is a certain breadth and roundness to the wine, which is really interesting. And that makes sense. I know I often talk about soils and uh, sometimes I don't make quite those linkages uh, to the finished wine. And I know soils aren't the be all and end all, but um, I do find that when there is a bit of a clay impact, I tend to get a bit more breadth and this is certainly doing that. Uh, but also there's a big sand component here, which I often find that that gives me a lot of lift and aromatic um, intensity as well. So this is kind of doing a little bit of that, but I think there's a certain roundness and breadth about this wine uh, that is really particular. And I noted it when I tasted this wine and the same vintage at the Domaine last year is that this wine has a certain roundness and a generosity to it. And I don't mean generosity in the sense of like it's full bodied or it's um, or there's a lot of weight here, but there's just this wonderful, um, generous kind of mid palate, juicy fruit, um, almost sweetness in a way, but not sweetness, like actual sweetness, but there's a sweet, um, profile to the middle, which is really lovely. Yeah. And the way this wine, the arc of this wine in terms of the experience on the palate is really nice. It's like a crescendo and then a decrescendo. It's like it starts with this very subtle, delicate, delicate kind of elegance, and then it kind of builds to this wonderful, generous mid palette. And then the finish kind of goes the other way and it goes back and it kind of recedes into this wonderful, delicate, nuanced profile. And it's really, um, really quite cool how it's doing that. And, um, you know, I visited the Domaine for the first time uh, last spring, and over the last couple of months, I've actually had a, a number of interactions with this wine uh, through my travels. I had it a few times when I was recently in London and, um, you know, tasting this wine and a couple other wines. And, you know, these wines have a really wonderful um, humbleness about them, and they're immediately likable in the sense that they're just, they feel really kind, really honest. Um, and there is this certain friendliness as if you open a wine and, and it's like there's like an intimacy to these wines that is really special as if you were drinking this like right across the table from Emmanuel or Lori and you know they were smiling and they just have they are some some of the nicest people I have met um, since in, uh, you know beginning uh, this effort and it is like uh, these wines are very personal to them and you can almost feel them uh, in in the in the glass, which is pretty amazing, um, and they have a lot of Cabernet Franc uh, in terms of their expressions, and um, I, there's not a bad wine in the bunch, and there's so much to discover just within this one domain in terms of what they're doing with their Cuvée d'Inspiration and also uh, also their Cuvée Parcellaire. Um, so it is a domain that you should definitely put on your radar. This Cuvée, all of their other Cuvées for sure, um, and if you've had the wines from Domaine de la Chevalerie uh, before, if you have have a favorite cuvee of theirs, uh, let me know uh, what the wine is and what you thought of it in the comments below. And of course, as always, I will be back again soon with another wine. Cheers.